helping people cope with and overcome life's challenges. This is Life Transformations with Michael Hart, Certified Christian Counselor and Director of Ottawa's Elam Counseling Services. Hi, I'm Michael Hart, Director of Elam Counseling Services, a Christian counseling ministry in Ottawa, Ontario. And I want to thank you for listening to this edition of Life Transformation, a Christian counseling radio show where chains are broken and lives are renewed. Elam is a Christian counseling ministry that provides professional counseling from a Christian perspective for individual individuals, couples, and families. With me in studio today is Melissa Waggot, and we are here today to talk about this important topic of couples communication. Welcome, uh, Melissa. Thanks for having me, Michael. I'm glad to be back. I couldn't hear what you say. <laughs> you need to listen, Michael. Maybe <laughs> okay. by the end of this... Maybe if you would just show- talk a little louder and be able to hear you. <laughs> <laughs> you would just listen better. Yeah, I think... Okay. Okay, so we're already fighting and the show hasn't started yet. Not that we're a couple, but we're just illustrating that sometimes uh, it's important to listen to to be able to have effective communication. So welcome, Melissa. It's good having you here today. Thanks so much, Michael. (laughs) Maybe we'll fix our issues by the end of the show. Of course. (laughs) So as we sort of jokingly brought up at the beginning of the show, um, through our little example there, communication isn't as simple sometimes as I think many people perceive it to be. Um, and we can run into issues with communication all the time. It's brought up in premarital classes. Um, we hear our friends talking about they never listen to me or she nags too much, all those things. Um, so you can really see how communication can play such an important role in relationships. Absolutely. Uh, spe- specifically for today, relationships between couples. Mm-hmm. So could you tell me where does communication rank in terms of the reasons that lead to issues in couples, specifically things like divorce and separation? How big an issue is it really? Oh, uh, Communication is huge for couples' relationships. As a matter of fact, it impacts every other issue that the couple will deal with. So if you have financial issues, communication is important. If you have sexual issues, communication is important. So in in one uh, study that was done that looked at the top reasons for divorce, communication breakdown was cited ahead of things like infidelity, financial problems, emotional abuse, physical incompatibility, loss of interest, shift in priorities, failed expectation, and even addiction. So communication ranks right at the top of all of those very significant things that I've just mentioned. Wow. So you can see if you have issues in that area, how it impacts everything. Mm -hmm. Um, Is there any other research findings that show how important communication can be to a couple's relationship? In one study that was done by Stanley and Markman in 2002, it was found that negative communication is linked with lower relationship satisfaction and higher rates of divorce. So if there if there is a lack of communication, couples are most likely to say that they're unsatisfied or dissatisfied with the relationship and they're likely to have more talks of divorce. But however, there is another interesting uh, study that was done by Gottman and others in 1998 that shows that when done well, conflict can be very healthy mm. for couples. So it's not the, the, the conflict themselves that results in marital breakup. But it's the way that people communicate, individuals communicate with each other about the conflicts that either makes or breaks a relationship. Wow. (laughs) So as you say, their conflict can make or or communication, pardon me, can make or break a relationship Mm -hmm. in conflict situations. Could you describe to us? What makes up communication? It's something we do every day. Mm -hmm. I think many people think they probably do it well. But what truly makes up an effective communication uh, pattern between individuals? I think a lot of time when we think of communication, we just think of speaking. You know, I'm communicating with you. If I just speak, then I'm communicating. And uh, sometimes in couples, when we have fights among um, uh, partners, often the hus- the wife will say something like, we never talk. And the husband will say, what do you mean we never talk? We talk all the time. We talk way too much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so, so there is this uh, sometimes difficulty in understanding what is actually involved in communication. So there are a lot of important factors or, that must be there for communication, effective communication to take place. I guess one of the the, 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 the key component is 
act, the, the talking of, of, of about what is it that you need to communicate, the, the, the verbal component. But then there's also the emotional component mm. of that communication that is very important. So emotions can be a, a, a good thing or a bad thing. And sometimes in couples fights, uh, a, a person might think, if I just say this louder and more <laughs> angrily. <laughs> right? yeah. You get up on your tiptoes yes, and you get yes. right in their if face. I just scream it to, uh, to the top of my voice, then actually I'll be communicating effectively and that person will hear me and go wow thank you very much for shouting at me I never really understood the issue that clearly before but now that you have shouted and you have made me feel you know so small then now I really get you so yeah. it's ironic that uh, that uh, couples uh, individual spouses behave that way with each other so emotion can be good if it is if it is checked and held in the right balance so when a person becomes too emotional in communication what it is that they're trying to communicate, what, what they do is that they drown out the content mm. of what it is that they're trying to get across. So I didn't hear a word you said. All I knew is that you shouted at me and you yelled at me and everything else is lost. Mm. So having the right amount of emotion can be very so so the verbal component is important but the level of emotion that accompanies that is also very important and listening is also a very important component of communication because uh, you listen not just by being present uh, in the room with someone else but by making eye contact yeah. it's amazing how many couples I see with the, the, the wives complaining that I am communicating important things to him about our children's future and he's watching his favorite hockey game Yep. You know, now that the senators are out, then maybe that won't be so much of an issue. All the relationships will be solved. In a lot of homes in, in Ottawa. But so many uh, husbands believe that as long as they are present, they are listening. Yep. They are flicking away at the remote control and the wife is speaking in the background. And But that's not listening. Effective listening involves eye contact. It involves also body language. Mm -hmm. Do I sit forward to show that I am attentive and interested in what you're saying? Or am I showing a body language like, oh, here she goes again, yeah. one more time, and I can't wait for, <laughs> just can't wait for this. Yeah. You cross this your arms yeah. and you lean back. And yes, just... yes. And you roll your eyes yeah. and then you said, we're, we're communicating. So all of those uh, verbal, nonverbal, emotional, listening what we call active listening by things like eye contact, body language are, are very important components of communication. One of the things with listening that I heard that really struck me, because I, I do this sometimes and I have to check myself, is that listening is not the same thing as waiting for your turn to talk. <laughs> you do, as you say, you really need to be present and listening to the words that person's saying uh -huh. and how they're saying it. Right. And so that you know the message that's being sent is being received right as that, well. That is such an important point, Melissa, and we don't have time to go into it today, but in my workshops that I, Kingdom Life workshops that I do uh, on communication, I talk about uh, seven different listening styles and uh, a few of the, the the incorrect listening styles, one of the names, one of the listening styles is called uh, the attorney or listening like an attorney. So that listening styles are for someone who, when their partner is talking, they're just waiting to pick apart the flaws in that argument, you know. So you might say something like, you know, you 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 never help out with the dishes, and that person is not hearing that my partner needs more help with the dishes. What they're listening for is that little word never, yeah. and they pick on that word and they say, "What do you mean? I never help with the dishes. I remember a day in 1976 when I actually helped with the dishes. I even put them away that day. <laughs> I even put them away. So now the argument becomes: I am like an attorney and picking your argument apart, and I'm going to prove to you that what you said. Uh, was wrong. So a better way of listening is to, can I hear the, the emotional component of what my partner is trying to communicate? Can I hear the hurt? Can I hear what is it that she really needs from me? Mm -hmm. And can I respond in a way that makes her feel heard and understood? Or am I going to answer in a way that makes her feel or makes him feel that what he or she just said makes absolutely no sense? Mm -hmm. 
was just thinking here, and we've all sort of grown up in different households, different homes, and we bring those experiences to the relationships we have as adults. Right. How do, does the communication patterns that we were brought up in influence the communication styles we sort of exhibit in our own relationship? Does it even have any impact? That's a very good question. And I think it does have an impact because I've seen couples who sometimes are from very different uh, family backgrounds where communication is concerned. So an example is the wife might have been from a family where mom and dad never argues, or so they feel. They Mm -hmm. might have argued behind closed doors, but the spouse is of the opinion that mom and dad never argues. And the husband might be from a family background where mom and dad argues with each other all the time. Mm -hmm. So he might not be conflict adverse. He might be very comfortable confronting issues talking about issues and bringing issues to the table, whereas the the wife, because she's from a family background where that was never done or she has never seen it done, uh, feels threatened mm. and very and in very unfamiliar territory when conflicts arise. So can you just imagine the clash and the tension that that creates because you have a husband who is very anxious to talk about issues and to deal with issues and a wife who is very reluctant to yeah. doing so. Yeah. So that brings up a pattern uh, we in counseling where we call the pursuer and the withdrawer, mm. where the husband pursues to get things solved and the wife uh, retreats or withdraw. And uh, what can result as a result of this is that sometimes this can lead to, if it's not dealt with, can lead to separation and divorce yeah. until... Uh, couples or the individuals, the spouses are able to look at conflict in a different way and to say conflict can be helpful to this relationship. It's a way of working on our differences and coming to a better understanding of who we are Mm -hmm. as a couple. And and as you said there, it can be a foundation of healthy relationships, having conflict or effective communication. Um, Are there uh, unproductive conflict management styles that do show up in relationships at times that maybe aren't so healthy. One of them you brought up a little bit was we always hear about this couple that we never fight. We never, ever, ever fight. Right. Is that healthy all the time? Is sometimes having a little bit of tension or friction or a, a healthy discussion healthy? I think it, it's if, if a couple never fights, it depends on what you mean by fight. If by f- never fight, they mean that we never have a conflict. I think that is a big red flag right there. When I meet with a couple that tells me that they never fight, it means to me that maybe there is one person in that relationship who is reluctant to talk about their dissatisfaction. So it is possible that if you have one person who is very conflict adverse and reluctant to talk about issues, that you could have a situation where couple arguments never exist because that person gives in in every situation, say yes to everything, whether or not he or she agrees with it and uh, uh, keeps everything keeps the harmony, quote-unquote, harmony mm-hmm. in the relationship going. I say quote and, and unquote because it's not real harmony. No, it's to the detriment of their self. As you say, their needs aren't being met, and really the partner's needs aren't being met either because they're just giving right. in, giving in, they're giving in. They're just giving in, giving in. So that leads us to one of the, that is actually one of the unproductive conflict management styles that have we a name? talk about. Uh, we call that masking. Okay. It's where issues are masked over. It's it's uncomfortable to look at these issues and to talk about it. So we're not going to have a conflict over it. So we just uh, put something over it. We cover it and we pretend, sweep it under the carpet mm. and pretend that we don't have issues. So we never fight. What often happens in relationships like those after maybe about uh, 10, 10 years or so, we find the spouse who never fights suddenly gets to a place where they become very resentful because mm. they have been saying yes, 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 yes to everything. And one day the other spouse will come home and find the house empty. Everything is moved out, including the ice cubes from the yep. refrigerator. And they're wondering, what happened here? I thought we had a wonderful relationship. And they had no idea. They had no idea that the other person was suffering and just giving in for the sake of avoiding conflict. Are there other unproductive conflict management strategies that the listeners can watch out for in their own relationships? Yes, there are, there are a few others that I talk about in our Kingdom Life workshops. And one of the other is 
is manipulation, where when there is conflict, if one person cannot have their way, there is a tendency sometimes to manipulate by making life really uncomfortable for the other person until they agree with mm. the other perspective. So in other words, if you can see that I really need to buy that golf set of golf clubs that I need, even though it's going to cost a $1,000 and mm-hmm. we have no money, I'm going to just withdraw from you. I'm going to stop buying you flowers. I'm going to stop helping out with things. And in this kind of a way, I'm going to make your life so miserable until you give in mm-hmm. and you say, you know what, you can go ahead and buy those those golf clubs. Mm. So sometimes it works like that in, in, in one incident, but sometimes a person might not give in to one incident, but over time being manipulated over and over and over again in this kind of a way leads to a kind of burnout where the other person realizes my life is going to be very miserable, so I better say yes to everything. So that's mm. a second style manipulation. And the, the, the third style is what I call mayhem, where there is this big free-for-all. You mm. know, we are both going at it. And as I said before, the content get lost in the emotions. And we are throwing pillows yep. and we are banging the frying pans and nothing is being heard because they, there is just like World War III is broken out and nothing is is being said. Mm-hmm. And then we have the, the fourth uh, unproductive conflict management style that I see in a lot of relationships where what I call it mutiny or divide and conquer. So I can't have my way, but I'm going to make sure that I get the children on my side, okay. you know, to make sure that they know that mom is the one why we're not going to Disneyland, you know, even yeah. though I want to go and mom is the one. Yeah, the good cop, bad cop good kind cop, of stuff. Good cop, bad cop, right. So I turn the children against you and even the dog I'll get to dislike you. Right yeah. now. <laughs> and you can see how that all feeds back into that ineffective communication. Yes, and yes, it does. It snowballs does. and snowballs. It does. So instead of really addressing the issues, we turn to these unproductive uh, strategies uh, uh, instead of really getting to the heart of the issues and working out uh, a solution. Mm. I asked my next question with a little bit of trepidation. I know sometimes we can't generalize entirely uh-huh. between men and women, but have you seen and is there documented evidence about differences between male and female communication patterns mm-hmm. and how that leads to how we interact with each other in couple situations. Right. Uh, yes, I think it, there are some some differences that have been identified. And yes, I think you're right by saying we can't generalize in every case because I've seen sometimes couples come in and it's the reverse mm-hmm. where the, the female has a male communication style and the male has a female communication style. But one of the things that is when we generalize and we talk about female method of communication is females are more likely to talk about the emotional component of how they feel and what certain uh, actions have on them. They will get very deeply into the feeling and will will pay special attention to the feeling component and talk about their hurt and to the point of sometimes shedding tears mm-hmm. and so forth. Uh, male style of communication tend to deal with just the bare, the, the facts of the matter. This mm-hmm. is what needs to be done. And therefore, this is what we do to fix the situation. So uh, uh, an example of where that sometimes leads to problem is that you have a wife who has gone through a bad day at work and she comes home and she just wants to say... <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm laughing now because I know keep going, Michael. <laughs> she comes home and she just wants to share that she has a bad day. So she will start saying, you know, my boss at work today is very, very mean. He did this and, you know, I can't believe that he would say yeah. those mean things. And, you know, she just wants to unburden all of she those emotions. She wants to talk about it. She wants to talk about it. But the husband goes into fix-it mode. Exactly. You know, uh, what time can I come down there to put that guy yeah. in his right place tomorrow? Did you Where? try this? Did you yeah, try did that? You try that? Did you try that? Did you start looking for another job? <laughs> you know, and it's, it's all solution-focused. Yeah. And she just wants to you just want to talk, talk about, it. about it. So she will call her girlfriend, and they will talk on the phone for 10 hours, and yeah. they will cry for five, yeah. and she will come away feeling much better about the situation yep. even though no solution mm-hmm. was given so a lot of time male method of communication tend to be uh, task oriented mm-hmm. or solution oriented mm-hmm. and, and misses out on the 
importance of the emotional component of the communication. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to know sort of where each partner is coming from when you are having those conversations of, I just want to talk or (laughs) I do want to fix it solution or whatever works out. So yes, yes. um, The intention of the conversation is known between both parties. Mm -hmm. I just need you to listen or I want you to fix this for Absolutely. And if you're you're just joining us today, you're listening to the Life Transformation Radio Broadcast. I am Michael Hart, Director of Elim Counseling Services. And with me in studio today is Melissa Waggott. And we are discussing this important topic of couples communication. Thank you for joining us and I hope that you will stay with us until the end of the show. So um, because you just fixed male and female differences, Michael, can you also (laughs) uh, talk to us a little bit about some common communication pitfalls that people sort of stumble into when they're um, talking or communicating in couples? Right. So it's that's a very important phase of, of our counseling that we do with couples where we try to identify what are the the pitfalls that are in their communication patterns and once you you dis, you you you're able to to say what those pitfalls are it's then very easy to help that couple to start communicating better and we have identified at least five common pitfalls that are you know goes ac- are found in all types of relationships uh, one of which is we call to deflect or deflection. The main, and this is where the main issue is bypassed and other issues <laughs> take center stage. So let us say that uh, a, a wife, for example, would want to talk about the, let us say, the the finances in the family. Okay. And she starts talking about the finances and then the husband brings up something about some household chore that was left undone and then mm. they start talking about that and then the wife brings up something that happened 10 years ago and then they start talking about yeah. that and then he brings up something that she did 15 years ago and they start talking about that. And you're getting further and further and further, and further from further this original further. thing. <laughs> Absolutely. You're getting further and further from the real issue that they, that started the, the conversation which is the finances. So couples sometimes find themselves into this rut where they're not able to have any any productive communication because every time that they try, they fall into this pit of deflection where a lot of other issues are brought up and they discuss uh, 20 different issues and none mm-hmm. of them are really discussed adequately. Is there a reason people deflect? or Is it because they're uncomfortable with talking about the finances and they want to run away? I or? think you just hit the nail on the head and talk about being uncomfortable. Sometimes discussing topics like that brings on a lot of anxiety. Hmm. So a person might realize this is a topic that I don't really want to talk about. And he or she is she's bringing this up this topic. But it's something that we need to talk about because we are going to go bankrupt if we don't talk about it. So the, the the prospect of bankruptcy is unpleasant. It's a heavy subject, and mm-hmm. so to deflect for to, to 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 avoid that, we go into these other secondary issues of of non importance as a way of of avoiding the real issue. So, Michael, are there other common communication pitfalls that uh, you could share with the listeners? Yes, another is what we call diminishing. This is where the the issue is made to seem insignificant or brushed away as being unimportant by the partner who doesn't want to talk about it. So using the same financial example, let us say that this spouse, the wife, recognizes that they're going further and further in, in debt and it's we are now $30,000 uh, on our credit cards and we need to have this discussion to, 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 to get our finances under control. But the husband... Uh, feels very anxious and doesn't want to talk about it. So uh, a a way of defending against that is to brush it away as being, oh, don't worry about it. This Mm -hmm. is okay. It's not a big deal. You know, I'll deal with it. Just leave it up to me. Yeah, and, we're fine. And so, and so, yeah, we are fine. And so this issue is 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 brushed off as being unimportant. Mm-hmm. Or sometimes too, it can be where the person has 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 been hurt, and the other partner says, "You're just making such a big deal out of nothing." Mm-hmm. So they're adding more insult to the injury, but instead of saying, "I can understand how you, you feel." feel. Mm-hmm. So. Just with the little bit of time we have left, can you touch on a couple other communication pitfalls? You mentioned they all started with D's, which was really easy to remember. So. Right. I'm not enough time to go into them uh, in, in detail with the time that we have left. But let me say that one of the other is what I call to deny or denial, where a person, instead of 
are talking about the issue and to listen to what the other person has to say, deny that it is happening the way that the person talks about mm. it. So, for example, uh, we see this often, and it's very funny actually when we talk about like intimacy in relationship, where one partner will be saying, "I'm very dissatisfied with the level of intimacy in the relationship," and they will usually give like a number of mm -hmm. times and say, "You know, we we don't have have sex often enough. It's like uh, three times in the last month." And the other person would take out like their diary and said no it's actually four times so yes, <laughs> so yeah. they're actually denying that there is a problem and yeah. they're they're proving the other person person wrong so denial can take part in that way or you can be outright denial as well mm. where a person refuses to and this is even more painful when a person refuses to admit that they are guilty of something even though all of the the, the facts are staring them in, in the face. And then we have uh, another uh, of the, the the communication pitfall, what I call demonize, mm. where the the person who raises the issue is now attacked and their mm. their character is attacked and things about them that, that the other person doesn't like is brought up instead of dealing with the issue. So you are nagging yes. is a very common yes. one. Right. So instead of Stop inst nagging inst me. Yeah, so instead of dealing with the issue and saying, Okay, we need to deal with the finances, you are such a nag, you know, why mm -hmm. do you have to talk about it now? Or sometimes it takes the extreme. Unfortunately, even in Christian homes where a person's swear words are used at the person mm -hmm. and they are just called all kind of derogatory names instead of actually dealing with the issue. So if when this starts happening, you know that the relationship is is really in trouble mm -hmm. because there is no way that you are going to grow as a couple and get to the root of issues if you start demonizing. No, and as you mentioned earlier in the show, communication is that foundation of it every is, issue is. that couples interact and deal with. So if you're in these pitfalls and in that cycle, I think it's really important to recognize that and get help from someone like yourself Absolutely. to sort of nail down what's yes. causing it and to come out of that. Yes, you're, you're so right, Melissa. And the, the final uh, one is, is what we call disruption, uh, where a person continuously interrupts the other person uh, who is trying to raise the issue. So it's a defense mechanism again. I don't want to hear what you have to say, mm -hmm. so I'm going to cut in every time you try to finish your statement about the finances as a way. So when this happens and couples come before us, what we try to do is to slow down the communication pattern and say, okay, just let him finish or let her finish because sometimes we see this pattern from the first session yep. and we have to slow it down so that disruption can stop. Uh, Melissa, unfortunately, we have come to the end <laughs> of We end communicated of too well. <laughs> <laughs> we needed more time to communicate, I think. So we have come to the end of today's broadcast and I want to thank you very much for joining us here Thanks today. Thanks so much for having me back, Michael. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much for listening to the Life Transformation Radio Broadcast. Uh, I'm your host, Michael Hart of Elim Counseling Services. And if you'd like to get in touch with us to find out how we can be of help to you, you can call us at 613-699-1677. Again, 613-699-1677. You can also reach us at www.elimcounselingministry.com. That's elimcounselingministry.com. Counseling with two L's. Thank you very much for listening to this edition of Life Transformation. Until next time, this is your host, Michael Hart, praying that God would grant you happiness in all your relationships and keep you sound in mind and pure in heart. God bless you.